Welcome, friends, to Mini Myths from Athena to Zeus by the Hellenic Museum. Here we tell the myths and legends of the ancient Greeks in the same way they would have heard them thousands of years ago, through voice and song. Now, let's dive into the story. Today we sing the song of the Oracle of Delphi. Let's journey together back in time to a rocky outcrop in the heart of Greece. A glowing cliff towers above it, while snow-tipped Mount Parnassus stands tall behind it, cradling the entire scene. Below the outcrop is a deep green valley running all the way down to the faraway sparkling blue sea. This is the site of Delphi, beloved by the gods as it has been for thousands of years. On this day, there was nothing yet at Delphi, only the sun and the wind. The king of the gods, Zeus, wished to know where the centre of the world was. He unleashed two eagles from the farthest two edges of the earth and ordered them to fly straight, never wavering from their course. Two birds flew on and on through mysterious lands and faraway seas until they crashed together and fell to the ground falling right on the steep outcrop at Delphi. Zeus wanted to mark the centre of the earth with something that matched its importance. He went to the dustiest corner of Olympus and found an enormous cone-shaped stone, one that he remembered well. And so, the stone that Zeus's father had swallowed, thinking it was the baby Zeus, was nestled into the ground at Delphi. This stone was called the Omphalos, meaning the navel or belly button, of the earth. A little later, the god Apollo was searching for a place to build a temple. He wanted to give the humans wisdom, and maybe more importantly, he wanted the sacrifices the humans would have to give him for his wisdom. As he travelled through Greece, Apollo found a gentle spring in the centre of Greece, surrounded by a shady wood. He announced, I choose this place for my radiant shrine, an oracle for all humankind. Here they will bring me perfect sacrifices and I will give them my wisest guidance. But the nymph living in the spring, Telfusa, was terrified that Apollo would disturb her watery home. She sweetly hissed at the god. Please listen to me, Lord Apollo. I'll be gentle. This is no place for a sacred temple. Swift chariots trample past me all day. Mules drink of my water, then hiccup and bray. And the men, they only stare at chariots and talk. They'll irritate you, sir. They stop, then they walk. But if you will, Lord Apollo, I have a suggestion. Move your temple from the place in question. Mount Parnassus is the perfect spot for you, quiet and still with a magnificent view. Apollo was persuaded. And Telfusa kept her sacred spring for herself, for now. Apollo flew through the centre of Greece, down towards the ocean, until he found lovely Delphi, overlooking the valley and the sea. I choose this place for my radiant shrine, an oracle for all humankind. Here they will bring me perfect sacrifices, and I will give them my wisest guidance. Apollo immediately began to build the foundations of his magnificent stone temple, right above the Omphalos stone. But, as the foundations of Apollo's temples were taking shape, he realised that the nymph Telfusa had tricked him. As Apollo raised up his temple, he heard a terrifying hiss rush through the forest. His heart stood still. Apollo heard the hiss again even louder. Apollo flew high above the rocky cliffs of Delphi and peered down into the trees. He could see the terrifying truth. Just a few moments from his temple, hidden within the nearby forest, a terrifying, gigantic snake named Python lived next to a rushing spring. The python was a monstrous serpent who struck terror into the hearts of mortals and gods alike. 
The sinister snake had been unleashed upon the land by the goddess Hera to punish her husband Zeus for bearing Athena with her cousin, the wise goddess Metis. When Hera found out that bright-eyed Athena had been born from Zeus's forehead, she went into a frenzy of rage. She thundered, From the gods above to the titans in Tartarus, to the wide green earth and the sky above us, hear me now. I will bear a child all on my own, a child without Zeus, a child not weaker, but even stronger than my husband, as strong as Zeus was next to my father Kronos. Grant this to me now and watch as the earth suffers. Queen Hera struck the ground with her hand and after one year had passed, the fearsome python emerged from the earth a creature unlike any god or mortal that had ever existed. Hera took the cruel python to the spring at Delphi and left it to wreak havoc on humanity. The snake terrified the people of Earth and the gods alike. Certain doom met anyone who met the dreaded python. Apollo knew that if he let it live, the python would do nothing but destroy his wondrous temple and everyone that visited it. He had to defeat the python. Apollo fought the python with his powerful bow and arrows. Finally, with one single strong arrow, he managed to strike the fatal blow that brought an end to Python's reign of terror. A terrible shriek screeched through the air, and the people of Delphi knew that the python's reign of terror was over. The tribes of people living nearby came with stones to help build Apollo's temple, and the sacred building began to rise up to the sun. But just before completing his temple, Apollo wanted revenge. He knew now that the nymph Telfusa of the sweet, gentle spring had tricked him, and no one tricked Apollo. He flew to Telfusa's lovely spring and brought his lips close to the water. He whispered, Telfusa. Little nymph, you managed to trick me. Well done. I fought quite the battle at Holy Delphi, but now this place is mine, your time here has ended. The humans will worship me here just as I intended. Apollo reached up and pushed a shower of heavy rocks over Telfus's lovely spring, hiding it from the world forever. He built himself another temple in the wooded grove just near the spring, and the humans began to worship him there too. Apollo returned to Delphi and finished his magnificent temple. Above the entrance, he inscribed what would become his most famous message to humanity. Know yourself. As Apollo had planned, people began to journey from all corners of the Mediterranean to seek answers from Apollo at Delphi and give him spectacular sacrifices for the privilege. But Apollo did not give his prophecies himself. Instead, he would send his answers through the Oracle of Delphi. This priestess was known as the Pythia, named after the dead Python. When the time came for the Pythia to deliver Apollo's prophecies, she would enter the inner sanctum of the Temple of Apollo, where the Omphalos still stood. In this sacred space, the Pythia would sit on a tall three-legged stool known as a tripod, chew on laurel leaves and inhale the fumes rising from a crack in the earth. In a trance, she would receive Apollo's messages, which she would say out loud in strange yelps and squawks. Apollo's priests would translate her prophecies into mysterious riddles and cryptic verses. When the king of Lydia, Croesus, sent his servants to ask the oracle of Delphi what he was doing on a specific day, the oracle replied, I know the number of the sands and the measure of the sea. I understand the speech of the dumb and hear the voiceless. The smell has come to my sense of a hard-shelled tortoise being cooked with a lamb's flesh in a bronze pot. Bronze is the cauldron underneath and bronze is the lid. She was the only oracle in Greece who got it right. People knew that the words of the oracle held profound truths from Apollo, but deciphering their meaning wasn't always easy. The wealthiest kings and the poorest pilgrims alike sought Apollo's guidance before making any important decisions. 
The prophecies of the Pythia were so highly regarded that they shaped the course of many events in history. Eventually, people stopped believing in the Greek gods, and the Temple of Apollo fell into ruins. The Oracle of Delphi stopped giving prophecies, and the Omphalos disappeared into history. But you can still visit Delphi today, and maybe you'll hear whispers from Apollo too. Thank you for listening to Mini Myths from Athena to Zeus. If you like today's podcast, you can subscribe for future episodes or share this one with friends. You can also follow the Hellenic Museum on social media or pay us a visit here in Melbourne. Tune in next week for the story of the battle for Athens. Yes, us for now. This podcast was recorded on Wurundjeri land. We pay our respects to their elders past and present. This episode was performed by Aaron James, written by Natasha Marinopoulos, with sound design and mix by Greek Media Group. The Hellenic Museum thanks you for bringing this story to life.